Hi, I'm Willa Sipple. And I'm Serafina Foreman. Welcome to Tell It Like It Is. In the early 1800s, Northampton served as a pivotal city in the movement for abolition and equality. We wanted to see how this history of diversity and black power in Northampton has implications on what Northampton looks like today and how this history can be used to educate students on preventing racism. We sat down with Steve Strymer and Lisa Baskin, historians at the David Ruggles Center, to learn more about the importance of Northampton's black history. Florence was 10% African American in 1850. Um, just before the Fugitive Slave Law made it much more difficult for people to stay here. But Sojourner Truth hadn't just stopped by here. She, had be, she was a longtime resident. She lived here at least 13 years, had her own house. This right across the street where, from where we are is where Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass first laid eyes on each other. The Northampton Committee Against Racism was founded in the 1990s. It funded the placement of the Sojourner Truth statue in Florence and in remembrance of the black abolitionists who resided here. Lisa Baskin is a member of that committee. There was a racist incident in Northampton High School. It was around the same time as the Rodney King beating in, in L.A. Uh, in, the in the early 90s. And there was a sense in, in the city of Northampton that we had to do something. We spoke with Ray Harp, teacher of black history at Northampton High School, to further the discussion of why Northampton looks like it does today and how we can use history as a tool to combat and talk about racism. I don't know how many people know this, but we don't have a lot of black kids here. If we aren't listening to the story, listening to the plight, if we don't hear that plight, then then we, we potentially put ourselves into a position where, where we're still in the same situation, where we can, we can move forward without understanding the, 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 the scars, the injuries that still stand underneath the surface. If you're still persistent in wanting society to change toward true democracy, then why not use the history as best you can to link that up with what we go through today and in a way the sad part is bemoan the fact that we're not farther along than we are now. And part of what we try to do at the Ruggles Center is to draw those parallels between um, and what we can learn from history to inform what we do today. And racism is alive and well. We live in a very liberal community, but, but you have the, you can say the racism of, of patronizing behavior. Speaking for the voiceless, sometimes does more to keep the voices from speaking. Never in our, in our city's history has it been a center for a lot of black folks. Northampton has, a, has, a, has an awareness that sometimes needs to be modified and understand that there's a narrative to be spoken for the individuals. In a time when issues of racism and discrimination remain at the forefront of American politics, it's important to remember the legacy of the individuals that championed these causes centuries before. The leaders of the abolitionist movement created a lasting impression not only on the culture of Northampton, but the nation as a whole. Thanks for watching. This was Tell It Like It Is.